The Dinner That Cooked Itself, written by J.C. Hsu and Kennard Pack. Long ago in China, there lived an honest, respectful, and hardworking man named Tuan. As a child, he had lost his parents and his kind neighbors, Old Lin and Madam Lin, had raised him instead. When Tuan was old enough to live by himself, he moved into a small house with a small field. But he was lonely and he longed for a wife. And so, Old Lin and Madam Lin hired a matchmaker. First, the matchmaker suggested the farmer's beautiful daughter, but she had been born in the year of the tiger, and Tuan had been born in the year of the dog. With a cat and a dog fighting for room under such a small roof, there would never be peace. Second, the matchmaker suggested the silk weaver's lovely daughter, but her name contained the character for wood, and Tuan's name contained the character for earth. With wind and earth fighting for room under such a small roof, there would never be growth. Third, the matchmaker matchmaker suggested the scholar's pretty daughter. She had been born in the year of the rabbit, a good match for the year of the dog, and her name contained the character for fire, which creates earth. But Tuan was just a humble clerk and too poor for her parents to approve. Despite his loneliness, Tuan continued to work hard. At sunrise, he went to work in the magistrate's court, and when he came home, he tended to the vegetables in his field until the sun went down. One night, Tuan stayed out later than usual, gathering cabbages. Finally, he sat down to rest and watched the moon rise. The moon was bright, and in its glow, Tuan noticed a large stone by his feet. He leaned closer and saw that the large stone was a large snail. What luck, Tuan exclaimed, picking up the snail. Are you hungry? I'll look after you. He had never seen a snail this big, and surely such a rare creature meant good fortune. At home, he placed the snail in a large jar with some succulent cabbage leaves. The next night, a very curious thing happened. Returning home after another long day's work, Tuan found his table already set with a dinner of cooked rice and vegetables. It must have been dear Madame Lin, Tuan thought, as he happily munched on crispy bean sprouts. But Madame Lin had been working on her farm all day. She didn't do it. The next, next night, another curious thing happened. Tuan came home and found little fried balls of pork, a plump chicken stewed with plums, and a hearty beef noodle soup next to the steaming bowls of rice and vegetables. It was even more delicious than the dinner from the day before. Who is being so kind to me? Tuan wondered as he ate. It must have been the scholar's daughter who has taken pity on my loneliness and cooked this for me. But the scholar's daughter had been practicing her calligraphy. She didn't do it. Tuan was very confused. He went home and fed the snail some fresh, crunchy bamboo shoots. I don't know who is being so kind to me, but if I am lucky enough to eat well, then you should too, my friend. The night after that, yet another curious thing happened. When Tuan came home, his table was covered with even more food. Now, more than ever, he wanted to find out how his dinners were cooking themselves. The following evening, Tuan came home early and hid near the table. Then the most curious thing of all happened. A beautiful woman in long silk robes that flowed like water climbed out of the jar. Hello, Tuan cried out. Who are you? Oh, she said in surprise. My name is White Wave and I am a fairy. The Lord of Heaven took pity on you because you lost your parents when you were very young and live alone in a small house with a small field. Because you work hard and are honest and respectful, I was sent to look after you until you became rich and married a wife. Then she looked sad, but mortals cannot see fairies in their true form, and so I must leave. Oh, please stay, begged Tuan. I won't tell anyone. I have seen a fairy from heaven. I cannot, dear boy, but keep my shell and fill it with rice. It will never run out and you will always have food for dinner. The sky grew dark and a heavy rain began to fall. White Wave ran to the door, spread her arms, and flew away on the mighty gusts of wind. Out of gratitude, Tuan built a shrine to the fairy in her shell. From that day on, he never failed to pay his respects to White Wave and the Lord of Heaven, and he never missed a dinner. 
Although Tuan never became wealthy, he continued to work hard at court and in his field. In time, he became a magistrate and married a woman who was born in a matching year and had matching characters in her name. They loved each other very much and lived happily ever after.